few good ones would be like drone technology. <laughs> I think that 24 7 an understatement to my day to day. If ain't no way, then I'ma make a way. They just say I say it ain't no way. I ain't never did. So, when I first came to school in 2012, I came for computer science. And I don't recall ever hearing the words industrial engineering before that time. Thinking back now, I don't think I could tell you what an engineer was or what they did at the time. And I'm not sure if this was because I was bad at math and no college was going to be sending me emails about wanting to go to school for engineering, like absolutely none for sure. Or if this was because I'm from a smaller school and my school didn't have a lot of extra like college classes, so we didn't have any like introductory engineer classes to give any insight as to what it is. But despite all that and never really hearing it before, just a few months after coming to school, coming as a computer science major, I switched over to industrial engineering. I actually remember the exact presentation that kind of got me on this whole IE kick and wanting to switch out of computer science. And a few of the things that I mentioned that really caught my eye and like had me like, yeah, like full-fledged IE, like not even really knowing what it was still. <laughs> a few of the things that he said were that IEs were the people's engineers. And what he meant by that is that you're not always working by yourself in a room or in a lab or not always just crunching numbers. A lot of the time it's group work and talking with people and solving problems and being down on the floor figuring stuff out or you could go multiple ways with it. Another thing that he said was that it's really easy to switch into, not really easy, but it's easier to transition into upper management positions through an IE degree and this is because we have so much uh, management, business management concepts tied into our major and we also have a clear understanding of operations, the operation side of businesses and like how it runs day to day. The last thing I remember him saying that like really had me like overboard like yeah like this is what I need to do is he said it's super diverse like after you graduate with an industrial engineering degree you can go you can kind of go any way you want you can get involved with almost any company almost any business you think about needs an industrial engineer in some, like you could tie it in some way, shape, or form. You can end up in healthcare, you can end up in manufacturing, distribution centers, you can work in retail environments, you can, like there's just a lot you can do with it. And this was super meaningful to me because, like I said, I just came in as a computer science major and if I'm already thinking about switching out, it pretty much means I'm not set in my ways as far as what I want to do. I came in pretty unclear. In fact, I remember talking with my advisor just a few months before school started and I was trying to tell him like what I wanted to do. We had it narrowed down between like psychology and computer science and another one. And I just came in as computer science because I just thought it was the coolest at the time. Looking back now, the funniest part of that whole situation was that I sucked at math and I didn't even know computer science was in engineering or at least at this school I'm not sure if it is at others but I didn't realize computer science was even under the engineering branch so it was just completely by luck that I ended up in that school and my math sucked so bad that I remember coming to college and I'm supposed to be going into calc and I took a um, a test that pretty a placement test that was going to tell me where I'm supposed to belong and they put me in out back in algebra in the second highest algebra like algebra here it's called 126b which means I take it three days a week I think because they think that I at least need it three days a week to understand it and then that following semester I mean I wasn't sure what I was doing a lot of things were going on you know it's a new environment and I just completely failed the class and they sent me back to 126a which means five days a week that's actually really funny looking back on it now because so many kids come in with the idea of man I don't want to like I suck at math or I'm not good at this or I'm not good at that or I'd have to start back from like algebra or whatever. And the reality is I started back from like, I've not only did I start back from algebra, but I started on that my second semester because I failed in my first semester. But after putting it into perspective, you could literally restart the curriculum of math if you're someone who's like, yeah, but I'm not very good at math because that's what I used to tell myself. You could restart the whole curriculum and be done with math in, I'm not exact, but like five or six semesters, which isn't, which isn't anything crazy. I know a lot of people like to put it, group people up and say, oh, I'm not good at math or I'm more of this kind of person. But the reality was I said I wasn't good at math all the time, but I just didn't 
grasp the concepts early enough. And when you keep building on top of the same concepts and you don't understand the one from earlier on, of course you're not going to be good at it. But if you did like a, a restart or a refresh and you really understood it from the ground up, it just becomes easier. It's not that someone's great at math or like bad at it. It's just they didn't understand a lot of the prior concepts. About a year later, I had maybe one or two IE classes, but I still wasn't very well grounded in industrial engineering. And I was struggling to really get the idea of what it is still. Like I kept hearing all these qual all these like qualities you need to have, and I was starting to get applied concepts, like things I could really, techniques I could use in the field and this and that. But I still really struggled to understand what industrial engineering is at the core essence. So I kept hearing the word efficiency. I kept hearing um, best practices and all this stuff, but I didn't have anything to relate it to. Like, it didn't make any sense to me. I didn't come from like a manufacturing background. My parents were engineers. I didn't, like, I had no idea. So around the end of my sophomore year, I had just got back from a study abroad in Hong Kong, and I had one or two IE classes under my belt, so I was slightly behind. But I kept hearing words like efficiency and best practices in these classes, and we were learning about core business concepts. And to me, the whole thing was like, like I bought in on IE because I thought it was so cool and like these qualities that they were mentioning of like leadership and working in teams and problem solving. But after these one or two classes, I started looking at it as this very traditional type of job. And that's cool and everything, but I was interested in like tech startups and cutting edge technologies and virtual reality. Like these are the things I was kind of like into and feeding my mind at the time off of whatever I was reading online or watching. So I, and I had this bravado about me that man, I wanna like make it, I wanna do my own thing and blah, 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 all this stuff. So I decided like, that's it, I'm just gonna leave school and save up money and move to LA or New York and do my own thing. I'm just gonna figure it out. So I did that and after leaving school, I realized I had to like make some money to move somewhere first and I ended up getting a call back from one of the industrial engineering firms that I applied to the semester before for an internship and I thought, geez, like this is perfect timing. Like I can go and work for them, build up a few more skill sets, and then use that money to make my move. And it was through this internship where I had a few critical moments and realizations about industrial engineering that changed my mindset on it. And it made me realize that it's not just traditional and it's not just this. It can be traditional. Like there's some jobs in industrial engineering that are extremely boring that I saw and I had to work some of them. But there are also some a lot. There are also a lot of very exciting positions and it's about more about how you see it and how you look at it and how you want to apply your skill set to the workforce and what industry you want to go into. My best description of what an industrial engineer does just in general is they take a system, whether it's a super small system of making cookies or an extremely large system of the distribution for an entire brand around the world. You take a system and you can break it up into components and you try to improve each individual component or part, and as a whole, that makes the entire system better. In a nutshell, and in new terminology, industrial engineers are innovators for their workspace. So when new technologies come up, like RFID technology, or, I mean, there's, I don't even wanna go into it, but there's a lot. We use these technologies and integrate it into our businesses, so we get a higher return on our investments. So let me just go into a few. A few good ones would be like drone technology. So drones are gonna be huge disruptors in the distribution idea. So like right now we go online, we choose five to seven business days because it's the normal or standard option, and then we get the good in a reasonable in those five to seven business days, and we're all we're kinda all right with it. But two or three generations from now, they're gonna be like seven, five to seven business days, that's gonna be like the longest time. That's like if something goes wrong. The new standard would be two to three business days or even less, it would be same day shipping eventually, right? With the whole idea of maybe not even the drones, but some new technology integrates into these platforms or there's a new standard amongst um, amongst the marketplace. Like two or three generations from now, you see how, see how much we take advantage of convenience and like wanting stuff. Amazon Prime right now is doing it in two days. So, that's just an example of how like technology starts to starts to form. The same with 3D printing. 3D printers are going to be hopefully eventually the standard if that does end up clicking and following through. And we won't be manufacturing a good and sending it to your house anymore. We'll just be sending, or maybe the middleman will be cut out, and we don't need a manufacturer for some goods. And now people just send um, software over to you. They send the blueprint, and then you you can download it and make your make it uh, work with your 3D printer. 
And obviously a lot of that stuff is on the more longer play extreme end, the idea that it's going to be a 10 or 20 year play out. But the decisions that industrial engineers and companies as a whole are making right now are going to be deciding factors on whether these companies succeed in the next coming years with this. And it comes down to a lot of industrial engineers. And I don't know if I have to say this by now or not, but I did re-enroll back in school. And there are a few things that I always do to encourage underclassmen when deciding a major. And one of the big things is that when coming into school, like I said, I, I wasn't very good at math. And I would not have been labeled like the type of person that these colleges or different groups were like, itching to like hand over a scholarship to, to like come for engineering or I might have been casted out as oh man he's, he's going to be out of engineering here real soon like he came in he's taking algebra trig he just failed algebra like he's not going to last too long but I encourage you guys that I'm not saying that if you're bad if you hate math and you're bad at it I'm not encouraging you to go into engineering I'm simply saying that we need more people who think outside the box and think creatively. So if your excuse is, oh man, like I'm a creative thinker, I'm on the art side. Like we need more people like that integrating into industrial engineering and integrating into these different engineering fields in general. Like we need people who aren't your traditional engineering thinker. Or at least that's my mindset on it anyway. But regardless, if you guys want more information, leave a question in the comments. Check out the details below because I linked up a site that talks about industrial engineering and their career paths and different stuff like that. This video wasn't meant to be as much of an overview as it was just perspective on where I'm at and why I got into industrial engineering in the first place. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, had to take you home with me, feeling like my vida loca. He's supposed to hold you, he's supposed to hold you down. Learn the ropes on my own. Street smart plus me, huh? Equal sweet art, get your feet off the new linen. No killings on the nearest blocks that we live in. Pastor telling me it's not my fault, but I'm feeling the pressure. My feelings.